Hello everyone, my name is Keris Jones, Finance and Procurement Assistant at Qualifications Wales and I am the Project Manager for the Procurement and Implementation of the new Finance, HR and Expenses Systems. The purpose of this webinar is to give you an overview of what we have done within the project so far, to help you with the completion of your responses to the invitation to submit final bids within eTender Wales, and to confirm some key dates within the procurement process. To give you a brief summary of what we have done so far, in February 2020, we commissioned 3C Consultants Limited to complete a comprehensive review to understand the current market. A request for information was sent out to suppliers on our behalf to provide us with information to understand potential suppliers and costs. In May 2020, we undertook some pre-PIN engagement to further discuss particular areas of interest to help inform our specification prior to carrying out more detailed pretender engagement during the summer. In July 2020, we then published a prior information notice to initiate engagement with the market, where we then held pretender engagement meetings during August 2020 with interested parties. During these meetings, we concentrated on our draft specification of requirements to inform our decision making for the final specification. We have now published the invitation to tender and Liz Frizzy, our Head of Procurement, will now talk you through how to submit your response within eTender Wales. Thank you, Karis. I'm going to take you through the three envelopes on eTender Wales where you can access the tender documents and explain what we have provided and what you need to complete as part of your tender submission. We have separated the tender into two lots, one for finance software with an expenses option and one for HR software. For the purpose of this webinar, I will take you through the envelopes in Lot 1 Finance. The sections and questions are the same for Lot 2 HR, although some of the documents may differ, which I will mention when I cover the relevant section. If you wish to bid for both lots, you need to express an interest against both of those lots to access the documents related to that lot. Firstly, I'm going to take you through the qualification envelope, which you can see as it appears to you in eTender Wales. The first section of the qualification envelope gives you the general tips for completing your response. At the end of this section, you are required to confirm that you've read and understood the instructions by entering yes in the response box and inputting your name and position in the box below. Next is section 1.2 where we have uploaded the invitation to tender. This document includes the instructions to bidders, the conditions of tender, our tender timetable and a section on the evaluation process. There are several stages to the evaluation of responses and I will cover those that are relevant to the evaluation of your written submission and demos of the software in this webinar. Later stages are explained in the evaluation section of the ITT. In the first stage evaluation, we will assess responses to the selection questionnaire, which I'll cover shortly. We will also evaluate financial standing using the test explained in this section. Finally, we ask you to confirm that the annual recurring costs for the software you are proposing are affordable and within our budget. The threshold we have set for Lot 1 Finance is £50,000 per annum, including VAT, and for Lot 2 HR, £30,000 per annum, including VAT. This does not mean we expect to pay these amounts each year, but advises bidders that submissions above these recurring sums will not be considered. I will cover the other stages in the evaluation when I speak about the response documents you need to complete in the other envelopes. You are required to confirm that you have read and understood the instructions by entering yes in the response box. Moving on to section 1.3, here you will find our form of tender and freedom of information pro forma, which you need to download, complete and attach to the relevant subsection. In the next section, 1.4, we want to know what terms and con conditions would apply to the contract should you be successful. We have decided not to draft our own agreement that we would want to apply. However, at 1.4.2, 
we provide you with heads of terms for areas that we wish to discuss with a successful bidder to ensure our needs are met. You are asked to confirm in the response box that you accept the content of the heads of terms document and would be willing to discuss these heads of terms with us. In 1.4.3, we ask you to upload the conditions of contract that would apply should you be successful. We appreciate that there may be more than one set of terms that apply to licensing, support and implementation services. If this is the case, please upload all that would apply. If you are unable to upload all of the documents to 1.4.3, then please attach them at envelope level. We now come to sections 1.5 through to 1.12, the responses to which will inform the stage one evaluation, as I mentioned earlier. Most of these are standard questions asked by public bodies in Wales. In section 1.12, we ask for information to assess your financial standing. We are looking to award a minimum of a five-year contract with options to extend up to a further 10 years and therefore need to seek assurance of the financial strength of bidders. We have provided a financial viability risk assessment spreadsheet that you need to complete and upload to 12.1.1. We also ask you to upload accounts for your last two completed financial years, if possible, audited accounts. The rest of this section asks further questions that will assist in our assessment. Further details on how we will use your data to assess financial standing are provided in section five of the invitation to tender. That covers the qualification envelope. I will now move on to the technical envelope. In the technical envelope, we set our requirements for the software and asked you to complete documents that one, confirm compliance with the functional and technical requirements, and two, provide evidence relating to our requirements regarding implementation and ongoing support. In subsection 2.1.2, we have attached a response template that we require you to use to respond to the evaluation criteria relating to implementation and ongoing support. In addition, Lot 2 HR has a criterion on Welsh language capability. We will use these responses for the stage three evaluation we have listed these criteria, sub-criteria, weightings and sub-weightings in section five of the invitation to tender. You should note that some of the criteria and weightings differ between lot one and lot two, for example, for HR, the Welsh language capability criterion. We also ask you to explain your software setup in the response form. This is just for us to understand which modules you're proposing to meet our requirements relevant to the lot and how they work together. You should ensure your response is relevant to the lot for which you are bidding. We will only evaluate responses provided against each criterion or sub-criterion and will not look for extra information in a response to another sub-criterion. When completing your response, please do not cross-refer to responses provided elsewhere. You should repeat the evidence if it is relevant to that question. Please try to keep your responses concise when answering the questions for each criterion or sub-criterion and take note of any word limits. We advise you to refer to the contract specification general and functional and technical requirements spreadsheet provided for each lot in this technical envelope. Please do not include or attach reference documents or brochures unless specifically requested to as evidence. The responses to the criteria in the response form will be evaluated using scoring model three which is provided in section five of the ITT. Please take note of the minimum threshold scores that must be achieved to remain in the process. We will also be evaluating usability during the stage three evaluation, which we will assess by reviewing demonstrations of the processes stated in criterion 3D in the evaluation section of the ITT. These obviously differ depending on whether your response relates to the finance lot or the HR lot. We ask you to provide links to the demos in the response form. We will score the usability criterion at stage three using scoring model two. In subsection 2.1.3, we provide you with the contract specification general, 
which will form part of the contract with the successful bidder. This is lot specific. In this document, we set out the background to our requirements and general requirements that we need the contract to deliver. You need to confirm acceptance of the specification document by answering yes in the response box. Finally, for the technical envelope, in subsection 2.1.4, we provide you with a spreadsheet, which is again lot specific and where we state our functional and technical requirements. The spreadsheet has tabs for each area of functionality that we require, along with general requirements and technical tabs. For each element, we state whether this is essential, desirable or nice to have. We require you to complete each line of the spreadsheet to confirm whether your software is fully compliant, partially compliant or not compliant by entering F, P or N in column E. Where requirements cannot be met as described, but can be met in an equivalent way to achieve the same outcome, please provide evidence in column F. You may also add comments here against the requirements where you feel necessary. We explain in section five of the, of the ITT how we will evaluate responses. We will evaluate the essential elements of the functional and technical requirements at stage two of the evaluation process on a pass-fail basis. We may pass a bidder through to the stage three evaluation where some of the essential requirements may not have been met, but the bidder has provided evidence in their response of equivalence of outcome in relation to the functional or technical requirement. We will evaluate the desirable elements of the functional and technical requirements during the stage three evaluation. Responses to these elements will be evaluated using scoring model one. We will not score the nice to have elements. These are requested for information only. Finally, we come to the commercial envelope. In this envelope, we ask you to confirm in subsection 3.2.1 that your offer is within the affordability threshold I mentioned earlier by answering yes in the response box. Attached at 3.1.1 is the pricing schedule spreadsheet that you need to download, complete and upload as an attachment to this section. The pricing schedule is lot specific. In the spreadsheet, you're required to provide the annual recurring costs for the software to include licenses and support for a period of five years, which is the minimum period we are looking to contract for. You must also confirm if the annual costs are fixed beyond the first year and if so, what period they are fixed for. We also require the one-off costs that would be incurred in the first year of the contract. The total five-year recurring costs plus the one-off costs will be used to score the price element of the evaluation. For Lot 1 Finance, we will not include the costs for the expenses option in this calculation. And for Lot 2 HR, we will include the costs for the recruitment module option but not the costs for the flexi time and performance management options when calculating the overall cost for, per, for the purpose of scoring the price element. In addition, you should provide rates for consultancy days that we may need due in the life of the contract and costs relating to an exit for the, from the contract in future. These will not form part of the price evaluation, but will be included in the contract should you be successful. Keris will now end the webinar by reminding you of the key dates and how you can ask questions via eTender Wales. So here's a reminder of some key dates within the process. The deadline for questions is 4pm on Wednesday the 28th of October. The deadline for submitting your bid is noon on Wednesday the 4th of November. Presentations will take place on Monday the 30th of November. We do have a backup date of the 1st of December in the afternoon if the 30th is a problem, but the 30th of November is our preferred date. We will issue the intention to award by close of play on Friday the 18th of December at the latest. The standstill period will end at midnight on the 6th of January 2021 and the contract inception meeting with a successful bidder for each lot will take place on the 15th of January 2021.
For any questions regarding the contract specification or the procurement process, please use the message facility on eTender Wales. For any technical queries, please contact the Bravo help desk either by phone or via email as they appear on the screen. Thank you very much for listening and we look forward to receiving your bids.